this is what's neat this week in September. We're celebrating Jeff Meyer opening up with some UP Aces, some beautiful Atherin locomotives on a snow, snow diorama. And then we've got Michael Buddy with some incredible 3D printed vehicles that he has perfected the customization of to make them look really good for auto rack loads. And then the finish this was neat this week video I'm going to talk about layout construction and how important it is to design your layout modularly for the simplicity of working on your models at the workbench and that's September's what's neat this week what you shooting Jeff I was just playing around with snow diorama and some mountains it's about yeah. the third time I've seen you out here with this snow scene now the last nine months. How's this snow scene working out for you? Uh, it works out okay. Just like I said, not the greatest day to shoot. Nothing now this looks like, it's just really, what, 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 is, what surface is on this? What is this? Is this plaster? No, um, a little bit of plaster, but actually mostly baking soda. Is it glued down? Yeah, it's cured. So it's glued down baking soda, which creates your snow effect, which actually looks good from all sides also static grass nice nice effect for this segment of what's neat this week I've got Michael Buddy who found some incredible vehicles printed in a 3D printer and are available from a manufacturer in Germany on the internet where he has custom finished and made these vehicles look just as good as they can. So sit back and relax and let's check out some of Mike's great work. Alright, these cars are printed on a 3D printer which prints in layers. I don't know how many thousandths of an inch thick but it's minute layers just over and over again and it program, it's programmed in to come out as any prototype vehicle that you put in there I guess. The layers are visible on this Pontiac too. And the first thing I did was put a strip of styrene down the hood on the Pontiac it before almost, I started to do any body work. It almost looks like layers in a tree Mike. Can you see the, yeah. you can almost count how many rings, how old this car is by the rings. Almost, I guess. If that made any sense. I think this is good. I mean, this is the most amazing thing that I can I ever think of. That you can program vehicles into a computer and print them up. And I think he can do any car. Grill, by he headlight, does. by mirror, by tire. I mean, again, this is a flat printer that's thinking flat. It's there are drawbacks. You can see the visible lines in the side, and the, the, the wheels aren't very good. Uh, they vary from model to model. And the detail on the front and rear of some of the vehicles, especially from the 60s and 70s, that have more detailed front ends, that doesn't come out real well. But this is so great that we but, finally have stuff right. from the 70s that it's, we can fill up our auto racks with. You can overcome all these difficulties depending on how much time you want to put into it but uh, like you said finally we have a variety of vehicles that we can now how many cars have you got so far Mike I've got about 30 of them 30 different body styles is that what we're talking about yeah, here yeah and you've done these cars that well, we've shown all, these are in various stages of completion these are all pretty much the way they came out of the out of the printer. Now we're in the United States and we're you have to buy these from Germany, is that right. correct? Right. Alright. And there's is there a website or somewhere where, yeah. where us guys can go and actually it's if we John, wanted to buy them and buy them? J A H N John 3 D dot D E. And the guy's name is Jens John. I've talked to him. And uh we'll repeat that at the end. Like I said, the ones that you're seeing now are, are pretty much straight out of the printer, but the proportions on them are perfect. Are these hollow? Yes, they are. So these cars are not solid. I can see right. an air hole right there where it's hollow. Where if you wanted to, you could put headlights and taillights in them? You could. That's a great thought ahead of time. The way I did 
I would cut the bottom out uh, so that I could hollow the whole thing out and uh, trim out the windows and stuff. But show me that car up close. Did you hollow that car out now completely? Show me that. Yes. Okay. Just I cut the bottom out with a Dremel tool and then it's not really that hard. The material is very easy to cut with a knife or file. First I started with a drill, drilled some holes and then I was able to file it out rough and then trim it with a knife. But <clears throat> And then you've uh, got these cars in order of the sequence of how you did, did them. Right. Now you got buddy body putty on the second vehicle to fill the gaps and yeah, holes. Uh, <clears throat> I learned the hard way that you need to do this before you cut the windows out because the first car I did I crushed when I was trying to work on the body. But um, <clears throat> yeah, you put a, a thin coat of body putty on there and sand it down. And like I said on the Pontiac, I usually start, if there's any kind of a peak or a crease on the hood, I'll put a thin piece of styrene there to give you something to work off. Then each one of these panels I would tape off, like on this station wagon here. Sand that, and I'll watch when I take this tape off. It's you got a nice, sharp, clean line there. Now I'll do the same thing on the top of the fenders, and that way I'll, I'll have a pretty nice finish on that. Okay, then when you get to this point, you're just about ready to paint. I got a, the styrene I added to the hood and then a little bit on the roof there. And uh, then a lot of body putty, a lot of sanding. I took the wheels off of this because I was going to put different wheels on it. Uh, as far as the way this can turn out, I've wanted this, this truck ever since I was a kid, ever since they came out. So anyway, I got it, several of these. Here's the way the one with the chrome front end would look. And so this is a finished truck here, the red one? Right. All right. And then here's another one, a cheaper version with the white front end, and I, I did the uh, windows with scotch tape. Are these vehicles the same year, Mike? Yes. Yes, these are all the same year, aren't they? Yeah, so... Anyway, once you get it smooth... What year are these, Mike? 1966. 1966 pickup trucks. Chevy, Printed yeah. out on a computer in Germany. And right. You brought them back here to the U.S. and perfected them into these photo-quality models that are ready to go. Yeah. I, well, like I said, this is a model I've wanted ever since 66, basically. And uh, they finally, somebody finally made it in HL scale, so that's what started me in on all these. And... But there's such a great variety of cars. Here's another one that's pretty well finished with the windows, bare metal foil. Um, they're just everyday cars that you would see on the streets, which is what I like. They're not all Mustangs and Corvettes, and, although you can get that stuff. You can get very, all the way up to modern cars. The way the cars look right out of the box, they'd be great for a winter scene. Uh, if you would just put a little snow on top of them, they'd look perfect because they look like they're covered with ice. So, your job is to, uh, if you want to make a nice looking model out of it, is to remove that icy look. How many body styles would you guess that you've got right now from this company in Germany? Probably, I got 30 different vehicles and they're all different except these trucks. I got or multiple, multiple to this Chevy truck. So in HO scale, I'll put the website in the credits of this video. It sounds to me like we've got an incredibly cool company that's making products from the 70s and the 60s that we could ordinarily never have for well, our auto racks. Through the 80s, 90s, and up into the 2000s, you can get modern vehicles as well. My cutoff date is 1980, so that's why I like these 70s and 60s vehicles. But uh, Boy, modern if we, models, you can, they have the new Camaros, they have all, all new models. This is pretty neat, and they're printed, 3D dimensionally right. printed, which is just just I can't even fathom that but it's a cool idea and it works website, and that's again is John J A H N 3 D dot D E cool man Mike thank you for sharing that with us and that's that's another cool thing on what's neat this week alright thanks
I want to talk about something about layout construction for this segment of What's Neat this week. And that is, I've got this one number 10 turnout that has caused me a lot of difficulty. I bent it, I ruined it, and I already know that. And then I installed it on my layout. And ever since I've done that, I've had more shorts and more derailments coming into this curve than I can even count. But recently I picked up a new Shinohara turnout to simply replace the old one that I ruined. So figuring when I put in the new one, everything's going to work out just great. But let's discuss something for a minute. Look at how far I've got to reach to work on this. And that's what I want to talk about with this section of layout design. I've designed this layout to be sectional. So therefore, let me show you something really cool so we can replace this turnout easily on the workbench. Okay, so what I'd say is the magic of the way I designed my home layout is I designed it modularly. I learned a lot of the modular concept from the Midwest Valley Modelers Railroad Club that I started back in 1989. We did like 35 different train shows with that layout and that taught me something. That taught me the way you, to build your home layout would be better off if you built it modularly. Simply in the fact that now I can simply take this turnout, rip out the old one right here at the workbench and easily get to any section of the layout that I need to because it is sectional. It can come out. And this is something that I discovered from the club layout. That is, if you design your layout modularly, you can change the seasons. You can make this all winter time, all deciduous, dead, dry growth or spring or any season you want up to the gorgeous colors of fall. That's the magic of being able to design your layout. Not the old fashioned way of 1x4s and straight up 1x4s and then lay road bed on top of the wood, but no, lay your track directly on top of the foam, design everything with sections of foam stacked up to the topography that you need, and it works. Over time, you're going to discover something called foam shrinkage. There's no doubt in my mind, through my experience now the last 10 years with this layout, that foam does in fact shrink. But because it's modular, I can simply shove the modules just a little closer to each other as time goes by, the rail joiners still match up, and it has not been a problem for me up to this point. So I suggest to you guys something to consider now when you build your layout. You've got the old fashioned one by four stick method of doing it, or you can simply build tabletops and drop your sectional layouts right on top of those tabletops and watch your trains run. It works. I've done it for 10 years and I, I seriously suggest it to you guys, folks. Just like that, I've cut out the old switch, I put in a new turnout, and I'm ready to put down just a little glue, only in the area of the ballast. And when this sets up, it should be as good as new, right on top of the foam, no problem with trains running. And we didn't have to hang over the river for any part of the layout to install this. It's very easy done at the workbench, standing up with a straight back. Now that's how I design my train layout. It makes sense. Modular, so it comes apart, to help facilitate working on different sections of the layout. I see no better way to do this.